Today on Tabletop Witchcraft, River Tiles. Hey everybody, welcome back to Tabletop Witchcraft. This week, building these river tiles. So, river tiles, why did I go with a tile? These are four by six inch tiles. I've got a table that's, you know, two and a half feet wide, and I wanted a river for a campaign I'm working on to cut right through this thing. And honestly, I didn't feel like storing, you know, a six inch wide by two and a half foot long river. I didn't feel like storing it. So I made a bunch of tiles, look at this, bam. Right there, just like that. They stack right on top of each other, four by six inches, go right in a drawer. So I ended up deciding to go with some XPS foam, resin, um, some static grass. Uh, you'll see in the video that I use a method to make the river which you really need to make sure you're in a very well ventilated area outside. I was outside with a mask on and I even had a fan blowing the stuff away from me because I actually use a soldering iron to kind of just carve out through the XPS foam. It makes a really awesome look, but you don't want to breathe that stuff in. So just make sure um, that you're outside, well ventilated area. So yeah, um, let's get to crafting here and make sure to hit that comment button, like and subscribe and hit that bell notification for all further videos here on Tabletop Witchcraft. All right, so you're gonna go ahead and just cut your tiles out and then draw in whatever river shape you want. Uh, these are four by six inch. And then go ahead and in a well ventilated area with a mask on and a fan blowing it away from you, preferably outside, use a soldering iron to just uh, carve in whatever shape you want for a shoreline and then the river itself. It melts really easy. Um, you don't have to have that uh, soldering iron uh, set really hot. Um, I actually end up plugging it in for a little bit and then turning it off and working with it off. It's plenty of heat to keep it going for a while. All the uh, stuff I use in this video, like the uh, epoxy resin um, and some other stuff, uh, will be in the description below if you're interested um, in the exact stuff that I'm using. And don't worry about little uh, mistakes like that. Uh, you'll see I touched a spot where I really didn't want to. It's all going to be covered up uh, later on in the build. Right now you're just going to get the basic design of the uh, river. Alright, now using a, uh, a knife here, uh, just to kind of score it a little bit and chip away at the, uh, the middle. That way you're not like burning all this uh, XPS foam. Um, you know, it's kind of doing enough of it already as it is getting your uh, outline. Uh, at this point, I'm just scoring it and ripping away uh, big chunks of it that I'm not going to need. There'll still be plenty of uh, foam left over um, that you can heat up to uh, match the look of the rest of the uh, riverbed. All right, and then same as before, just go through and uh, hit it up lightly. The stuff will um, actually harden up too, um, pretty solid, the foam, so it's kind of cool. And you don't have to press hard or long, otherwise you'll put that um, iron right through the XPS foam. And here's what my layout looks like. I sampled a few pieces with some uh, Mod Podge there, but that's the layout. Now just to sturdy the piece up a little bit because it is a little thin um, where we cut the river out. I'm just taking a little bit of cardboard here and uh, cutting it out 4x6 to match the tile, a little hot glue, and uh, just stick the uh, XPS uh, river tile right on there. And it's not going to be exact, you see there's a little hangover there on the edge on the left side. You just cut that off with uh, a knife. And then we'll go ahead and mod podge this whole piece. Mod Podge, some black paint, and again, I like to use a little bit of water. And now I'm using some apple barrel, like a tan color, um, an aqua blue almost, and a darker blue. 
I was really going for it and I wanted like a, a magical um, looking river, you know, really um, fairy tale looking almost. I didn't want too much of a realistic, like a muddy brown water. Um, I wanted this kind of bright. So uh, here's the method that I used uh, to paint that to, to achieve it. You start out with that dark blue here in the middle. And you're going to work with all the paints here while they're all wet. You're not going to let any of them dry here. And if you want to go with a more realistic color, you know, obviously just vary up uh, the colors that you're using. And here's that kind of uh, aqua blue color. Working that in uh, right with the blue, the darker blue. So just pat that on there and just kind of fade it into the, fade the two colors together. Wiping off the excess uh, in between because the colors do get muddy together on the brush and you don't really want that. And just keep working it together until you get the, uh, the fade that you're going for. Alright, now I'm taking a little bit of black. I'm just dabbing that right up the middle. And then again, wiping off the excess. And then getting uh, the transition that I want um, to show like a really deep part of this river. I'm really doing a lot more dabs and brushing it together. And now I'm just doing the shoreline here in a lighter tan. And don't worry about how bright that is. We're going to darken that up with some washes later on. Alright, so I know what you're thinking. Hang in there. <laughs> uh, when I was doing this, I was like, oh, that's really green. Um, but to be honest, we're going to go ahead here and uh, take some flocking and we're going to use that and cover all of this. Uh, this is just in case any parts were exposed um, that there would be green underneath but we're going to cover pretty much all of that. Alright now for the shoreline I'm going to use like a dark muddy brown and again we're going to wash all this stuff so the colors are going to vary, you know, the end product. Um, so we're going to do some muddy areas and change this up however you like. Um, that black spot there, we're going to turn into a rocky area. Same blending technique as the river, blending that mud up into the grass. And a dark, um, like a pewter gray um, for the stone base. Now I'm just doing a little light dry brushing on the shoreline. And some dry brushing with some apple barrel uh, pewter um, on the rocks. And here, I wanted some spots where my players could hop across the river um, and have some playable spots uh, in there as well. So I cut some rocks out um, to about a one inch size piece where I could place those in the river. And here are some sticks from the yard. And I'm just going ahead and I'm uh, mod podging those. And same technique as the, uh, the stone on the shoreline. We're gonna Bring that up with a light, lighter brush of gray on the stone. And you see I'm bouncing back and forth here. It's just because I'm working in between uh, different pieces while the sticks are drying. I'm working on the stone and back and forth and back and forth. So now I'm just taking a brown for the sticks, hitting that up. And uh, what I did was I went out into my yard 
and I picked a bunch of pebbles up. Again, you want to keep in mind the scale that you're working with. And roll those around in uh, some Mod Podge and then some, uh, like some graphite gray uh, from Deco Art. And uh, just coated them all. And I'm going to place those into some smaller boulders along the shoreline. You'll notice around the larger stone, the XPS stone that's in the river, I just uh, hit up some gray around the base of that to show as the reflection of the stone down into the water. And now I'll take some Vallejo thick mud. And what I'm doing here is uh, pretty much all those brown areas, we're going to cover that up with uh, this mud. I didn't like the way the, just the brown paint looked. I felt like this piece needed to have some, you know, some texture to it, um, and the paint really wasn't going to just cut it. And then we're going to take some uh, black wash and hit all the stone pieces on the shoreline, the rocks and the river, boulders, all that stuff. All right, now we're gonna cover up that bright green. I'm gonna take some just regular uh, glue here and uh, just spread it out wherever you want it to have that, that grass. Uh, one thing just to note, um, I used a little too much glue there as you can see, but uh, I would go ahead and actually do the uh, epoxy portion first. I found that um, when I had placed the epoxy, it got drawn up into the, uh, the flocking here. It made it a little, uh, look like it was really wet. I mean, it didn't look bad, but um, I guess it all depends on what look you're going for. And I'm not using a static rest applicator. I'm just kind of putting it on there, tapping it in place, and uh, I think it still looks pretty good. And then a dry brush on the stone of a uh, kind of like a linen color and again you're gonna hit all the stonework on the piece and this is just a brown wash for the shoreline Now I'm going to take some uh, grass tufts and just place those along the shoreline too with a little bit of uh, super glue just to break up uh, the vegetation. I was thinking about putting some, uh, you know, some small flowers and stuff like that in the grass as well, but the whole point of these pieces is to be able to stack them, so uh, that kind of ruled that out. Which is another reason I didn't bother with a static grass applicator. I mean, these things are going to be stacked on top of each other anyway. Alright, now just take a little masking tape and uh, just press it on to the edges here. I'm going to press it on really good, that way you don't have any leaks. We're getting ready to do the resin. Obviously a little bit of help here is nice. And then uh, you want to mix these uh, pretty accurately. I'm using a, a scale here that I picked up uh, online. And as I mentioned earlier, the uh, exact um, epoxy resin that I used, uh, you'll find in the description below. But mix those equally. Um, and I pour a little extra, maybe just an extra uh, gram or two in one of the cups because you're never going to get all of it out. And then just start mixing it. Follow the directions. It's, you know, you gotta mix them each a few times, then dump it all out into another cup and mix it all. I mean, they want to make sure you got full um, mixture of, of both uh, parts A and B of the epoxy resin. 
And now I'm just, again, I wanted to go for like this magical, mystical look, so I wanted to keep the water uh, looking, you know, really bright blue. So that's the, the inks that I used, some Vallejo inks. Blues, and I used a little bit of green in that too to achieve that color, not much. And then go ahead and just pour it in, keeping an eye on uh, your level. You want to try and keep the level of the resin the same on each. That way the water level isn't different on each tile. And when you pour it, you really want to kind of just pour and go for it. That way it doesn't drip down the cup. Alright, then you could use a, a well here, you can use your breath to pop the bubbles, so the carbon dioxide is what pops them. And you use a toothpick to kind of tease the, uh, the resin into all the little nooks and crannies. And you'll see here, I got distracted and got into another project. And uh, I should have went back like 10 minutes after, 10, 15 minutes after I poured it and I didn't. And you'll see some, uh, some bubbles there. Um, again, those would have came out with a simple uh, breath of air over it. But uh, you'll see, I end up, uh, turn that into you know just some rapidy type looking stuff later on in the build and just to neaten things up I paint uh, all the edges here in black now we're gonna take some Mod Podge and create some surface ripples on the epoxy resin um, so just keep dabbing it in um, I like to work in about two, three inch increments. Um, this one I tried to do the uh, Mod Podge over the whole uh, four inch length of the river and it proved to be a little bit too much. The uh, Mod Podge started to set up on me. But here I'm just using an airbrush to create some ripples. Um, if you don't have an airbrush, no problem. Some canned air would work. Uh, and you could also, you know, use your breath if you had to. Use a straw and just kind of little puffs of air to create the same effect. And some uh, Vallejo water texture. Uh, this is some pretty decent stuff for some fine detail um, and ripples um, coming off of, you know, like edges of stone or, or sticks in the water. If you've got calm bodies of water, little ponds that you're working on, this stuff is great for ripples. Drips in a sewer line if you're making sewer tiles, really works well. And all this stuff dries clear. And a little also goes a long way, so just little bits at a time. Now I'm just taking a little bit of white paint to add some turbulence, I guess, to the uh, to the ripples there. using a toothpick just to move it around get exactly where I want it all right that's about it All right, everyone, we did it. We got a four by six stack of river tiles all set and ready to go for our next game night. Now, just because I need a river to rip right through my game board doesn't mean that's what everybody else needs. So take these ideas you saw in this video and make them your own. Maybe you got some tiles that branch off. Now you got two rivers running through your game. Or maybe some come to a dead end and turn into a pond or a swamp or a bog. Use your imagination and come up with whatever you want using this video for your own game. So with that, if you guys like what you see, 
Hit that like button, comment, and subscribe, and hit the bell notification for all further videos here on Tabletop Witchcraft. Till next time, see you around.